We have a Mercury retrograde starting literally the day before my birthday. Just love that timing. I actually like this Mercury retrograde for certain reasons. No, do not be too scared. Do not like think it's the end of the world, anything like that. So we're gonna run through in this video what is happening with this Mercury retrograde. Then we're gonna explain how it's happening for your sign, what to expect, and yeah, the usual Mercury retrograde protocols. First things first is that Mercury is retrograde, but so are about five other planets. So there's gonna be a lot of already existing slowed down energy. It's not like this Mercury retrograde is gonna hit you with a bang necessarily. All six of the planets retrograde are gonna be what's hitting you with a bang basically. It's not just Mercury. So I think a lot of the issues are gonna get blamed on Mercury when like, bro, there's five other planets retrograde. It's not all Mercury's fault. So Mercury retrograde deals with communication, travel, logic issues. Slowing down, delays, miscommunications, hiccups with that. It does not usually indicate personal relationship issues aside from like literally communication. It does not usually indicate breakups whatsoever. Mercury retrograde actually usually indicates going back to a project or person that you might have logically been connected to in the past. It's more of a Venus retrograde thing to contact an ex again romantically. However, lucky us, Venus is retrograde for the first week or so of this going on. So that might actually happen and it's more of the Venus thing than it is, okay, what are my cats doing? So Mercury is going retrograde on August 23rd. It will be retrograde opposite Neptune at first. And I don't love this, but there are some redeeming qualities. Mercury is both exalted and in its home sign in Virgo, does extremely well in Virgo, and it is comfortable in Virgo. When a planet is exalted, it is lifted up and it does very well. It's, you know, admirable. It tends to act with a lot of uh, noticeable recognition. And when a planet is in its home sign, it's the most comfortable to not cause issues, basically. Virgo is that sign for Mercury in both ways. Mercury just by far objectively does the fucking best in Virgo. You guys with your wishy-washy woo shit might be like, you know, every, no, 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 no. It does the best in Virgo. And I don't say that as I don't have Mercury in Virgo. So Mercury in Virgo is technically the best place for it to be retrograde because retrogrades are not bad. They're just annoying. And if it can be annoying in the best possible sign, it can show constructive, concise, eloquent, on point. Mercury retrograde things, which are in their best case, revisions, rewriting, going back and redoing things that are the most relevant for you during this time, which we will get into. So retrogrades are the epitome of going back, slowing down, looking within and reconsidering what the next plan of action is. It's annoying for people like me that are extremely type A, go, 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 and do not like to revisit the past or slow down whatsoever. But I do find that during these times, going quieter or going within a little bit more does serve me really well for what I can then bounce back out of afterwards. So like I said, this retrograde does start opposite Neptune. Neptune is a planet of, in its negative senses, which do come out during an opposition in this case, delusion, lack of clarity, fatigue, and not being directly honest with people. There's also the bright side of Neptune, which is beauty, ideals, spirituality, transcendence. However, in an opposition, that is a hard aspect. It's not gonna show the great shit. Mercury opposite Neptune shows difficulty communicating very clearly or being on point with our own mental state early on. So like I said, Mercury is in Virgo. This is very helpful in the long run, but in the first few days, there's likely to be fatigue, confusion, not feeling like your head's screwed on quite right, and maybe having difficulty being honest with people or being direct with what they need to hear. Thankfully, however, Mercury will be trying Jupiter during this time, which is amazing for abundance, for opportunities, and for speaking things into existence that are very positive. So if you're looking for success or progress on something that is taking you going back to it, this is actually really a transit for that. There is this spirit of optimism. Mercury will then station direct on September 15th. Unfortunately, it will be opposing Saturn. So Mercury direct shows that September 15th, things will start to get easier with communication and definitely by October, I'm not, I'll get that later. I don't feel like getting in the middle of that. By September 15th, things will begin to get a little bit easier. However, the shadow period is going to last until October. So October is really when things get much clearer with communication and intellect. But on the 15th, when it does station direct and over the next week or so, 
Mercury opposes Saturn. Saturn is a planet of boundaries, maturity, hardship, and cold, like hard reality. So Mercury opposite Saturn shows that this Mercury retrograde is going to end with a cold, hard truth kind of thing of like rejection, a no, having to fucking get it together and be cold. So it's not bad by any means, but just like get ready for that because it doesn't end on like that great of a note, even if it is trying Jupiter and you're in this time as well. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. I think that this is in general a really nice time for revisions, for going back to things and for making sure that you are taking inventory of what's working and being really concise and analytical and if you need to go back and contact people doing it in a way that is not wasting their time that's a big emphasis with Virgo energy not wasting people's time fuck no now getting into what it means for the different rising signs starting with Virgo itself um if you oh baby it's okay baby it's okay baby hi I love how cats, like, you can cuddle them all the time, but then, like, you reach out to pet them, and, like, they're not in the middle of cuddling, and they freak out, so, like, I don't know why you're scared today. I just got a cat yesterday, another, I got another sphinx, and he is the cutest thing ever. His name is Dobby. If he comes out, we'll see if he comes out in a second. So if you're a Virgo rising, this is in your first house of self, you're going to be rethinking your appearance, your vibe, your personality, and maybe definitely becoming one of the most private people um, with speaking to yourself internally in that reconsideration. If you're a Libra rising, it's in your 12th house of mental health and spirituality, so you might be rethinking what you do to support your mental health, your addictions, what you use to cope mentally and stuff like that. If you're a Scorpio rising, it's in your 11th house of networking or connections to large groups of people, so you might be more introverted and less willing to join forces with other people and might be reconsidering your ties to others. If you're a Sagittarius rising, it's in your 10th house of career, so you're probably reconsidering or going back to work on some things around career. If you're a Capricorn rising, this is in our ninth house of foreign traveler higher education. You might be having to go back and rethink your philosophical beliefs. You might be revising something that you're studying, or you might be having to have some issues with travel or going back on something with travel. If you're in Aquarius rising, it's in your eighth house of investments or finances. So you might be uh, redoing something financially that's a little bit more complicated for you. If you are a Pisces rising, it's in your seventh house of committed relationships. So you might be having communication issues or rethinking communication with a very important relationship in your life, whether romantic or not. If you're in Aries rising, it's in your sixth house of physical health or coworkers. So you could be changing up something with your health and reconsidering that or just changing things up with the people that you work with. If you're a Taurus rising, this is in your fifth house of dating or creativity. So you could be having to revise something artistic or dealing with some issues and going back with a partner. If you're a Gemini rising, it's in your fourth house of family or property. So you might be having to do things around the house, renovations, or there could be issues with family. If you're a Cancer rising, it's in your third house of day-to-day -day routine, communication, and school or like daily things that you're learning. Um, so this can show that you're having to rethink your routine, your lifestyle in terms of scheduling. And if you are a Leo rising, this will be in your second house of income or finances. So you might be having to rebudget or rethink the way that you're spending money. Now I'm going to pull an Oracle deck card for this because I have them out. So let's see what comes up for this Mercury retrograde. In bulk awakening. I don't know what the fuck that is. Let's see. I've not used this one in a, like literally three years. I've used this deck since like 2020. The goddess stands in maiden form shining through this very dawn. New fruit stir in her virgin womb awaken now from winter's tomb. The magic has worked with harm to none. So mode it be there. It is done awakening so basically this is showing that you're having some kind of wisdom come to you or purification of things that aren't worth thinking about so that leads to uh something to come in that's more uh, you feel more like aligned with the thoughts so definitely this could be a time of like purification and mentally clearing things out i mean with virgo we do like to you know cut shit and take up space mindfully so maybe that is in line with that but yeah i wouldn't be too concerned about this mercury retrograde it's the best sign it can be in i mean there's always going to be some downsides but uh yeah i mean I know how you feel about it down below and I'll see you in the next one.